Hello, everybody. I wanted to talk, of course, today, tonight. It is nighttime right now where I am. Um, I wanted to just uh, talk about something that, that occurred to me upon hearing uh, about the death of Queen Elizabeth II, which, wow, was that ever, like, uh, a long time in the making. I don't mean to sound callous or anything. But, uh, you know, I never, I, I thought she was just going to keep on going and going and going. Um, uh, but it looks like Bonnie Prince Charlie is finally going to, going to get to, uh, uh, assume the reins of the, of the monarchy and it'll be interesting to, I'm not really, I'm not a monarchy enthusiast, uh, or, or in particular of the, of the, uh, the monarchy of the UK, uh, or, or a monarchy enthusiast in general. Um, but, uh, it, it will be interesting to see, uh, what happens now because Charles is not a very popular figure. He's, he's, uh, he's rather loathed from what I gather by a lot of people. And this man is now going to become the king I guess he is technically already the king of England, but but uh, he'll be coronated sometime in the next few days and become become the official king. Um, but I think he already has that title. Um, I think that's how it works. But uh, this guy is not well liked. Uh, you know, people are still angry with him uh, <clears throat> for uh, how he supposedly treated Diana, uh, who was a, a people's favorite. Uh, so. You know, what happens when the king uh, is uh, the king of a country is is uh, despised by a large majority of the country? Um, <clears throat> you know, do they or do they just rally behind him now because it's it's the monarchy and and uh, you know you got you got to get behind him? <clears throat> I mean, I know that there's still there are I know there are di people with different uh, points of view. Uh, all across the UK, from the very pro-monarchy people to the very uh, anti-monarchy people, um, but it just seemed like with with Elizabeth, for better or for worse, and, and I'm going to talk about something in a second, which brings up which uh, brings up some uh, some of the some of the more uh, some of the darker lore concerning uh, uh, Elizabeth, but. Um, for for better or for worse, can, uh, uh, as far as what kind of a person she actually was, it seemed that it seems that Queen Elizabeth was w w respected um, and looked up to and seen as sort of the mother of England and and so forth. Which to me, I, I just I can't quite relate to any of that. I mean, I I can understand you know how it works, uh, you know with. Uh, within the Catholicism with Mary, uh, being the mother of us all, but I just have a harder time, you know, when, when you've got this tangible, uh, this, this family, uh, and we're supposed to think that they, you know, are our, uh, our parents somehow, and, and she's our mother and she, she cares about the, the, uh, the country generally speaking. Uh, I say we an hour, though of course I'm not. I'm not from the UK. Here's here's what occurred to me, though, um, and this is really the meat of this video. Four minutes in, finally I get to it. Uh, it just it just occurred to me the other day, or just to, just today actually. Um, you know, the line in. Uh, the Sex Pistols song, God Save the Queen, which I talked about, interestingly, just a few days ago when I was asked about my musical taste. Um, I talked about uh, when I uh, when I got into the Sex Pistols, which was well past the age uh, that they were uh, actually uh, existent. You know, it was like when I was in my 30s, uh, or, or in my late 20s, pushing 30, uh, Back in the late '90s, I finally got into uh, the Sex Pistols and saw how great they were. 
uh, and you know the, the 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 defiance that they flung, you know, uh, in the face of uh, of uh, those who would uh, who would want to control what they could say, what they could think, uh, what they were allowed to, uh, uh, the, the ideas they were allowed to express, etc., et and so forth. But the song "God Save the Queen," which of course is an extremely uh, uh, controversial song in the UK, got banned on the BBC Radio, I believe. Um, and it reached number one on the charts, but but the, but when it reached number one, they didn't list it. Uh, they didn't list the song title. Uh, so so it was like uh, number one, blank space. You know, nobody, not God Save the Queen, Sex Pistols, but blank space, blank space, number two, whatever. <clears throat> I mean, that's pretty wild. That's pretty crazy. But um, so uh, I always thought the line, uh, uh, God Save the Queen, she ain't no human being. I, I, I just sort of thought that's just sort of a throwaway line, uh, <clears throat> um, you know no particular significance to it. But I, I started to, to uh, wonder about it a, a bit more. Um, you know, just, just considering, <clears throat> again, the darker lore uh, concerning monarchs, generally speaking, and the notion that, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the, those with the, 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 the bloodlines that are uh, supposed to be fit to rule the world, uh, that they might be something other than human. I'm not saying I believe this myself, uh, but you know, I'm open to possibilities. Um, there was an, there was a movie that was semi interesting that I saw a couple weeks ago called the invitation, <clears throat> which is about an American woman who gets, who finds that she has some kind, some uh, uh, distant uh, 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 like uh, family relation to some <clears throat> some high placed uh, aristocratic uh, family uh, in in England, and she flies over uh, uh, to, uh, to 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 watch this wedding take place, only to discover that she's the one that they're grooming to be the new bride. Uh, and, uh, sorry, sorry to give this away, sorry to give away the twist to anybody. Uh, but, um, uh, but in this movie, the, the, uh, the members of these families are not human. Now what, what they are is something like, I don't know, maybe vampires or some kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, ghastly, uh, um, preternatural creatures, um, you know, who, who, uh, who, um, pursue immortality by consuming the blood of mere humans. Um, and so it was, it was, you know, it's a semi-interesting movie, uh, just, just for sort of dabbling in those kinds of ideas. Um, <clears throat> It's not great, not a great movie, but but interesting. Um, and of course, with with Queen Elizabeth, you know there there have been things, and, and I'm not again. I'm I want to talk about this stuff and say that it's interesting and that, that it's worth considering. Just because who who the hell knows what's real? You know what's what's real and what isn't. Who knows what's <clears throat> what's actually going on uh, in the realms of those who uh, uh, are among the ruling classes? Um, but there, you know, there, there, there is lore. There, there, there are stories of the queen shape shifting <laughs> that I've heard about. Um, you know, there, there is lore that that uh, su that would suggest that again, those of these these royal bloodlines or these highly placed bloodlines, uh, um, well, they, that they're, that they, that they don't see themselves as, uh, being the same as us common folk. And, uh, it's not just a question of, uh, you know, 
being uh, being exalted through one's family line. It is that, but it's but it's maybe there's something more to it. Uh, maybe uh, in some way they really are uh, of a different species. You know whether <coughs> whether we're just talking in their mentality or. Or, or, or maybe we're talking about, be, you know, something uh, actually uh, physiological. Um, I just thought it's, it's just really the, that line, uh, God save the queen, she ain't no human being. Um, uh, and there's no future in England's dreaming. Um, the line about her not being a, being a human being is... is uh, it, it, it assumes this whole new uh, new dimension uh, of uh, meaning for me uh, when, I, when I was thinking about it today. And you know, take take it however you see fit. If you if you think uh, that this is just nonsense, then then whatever. You know, it's, it doesn't have to be your your uh, area of interest. Um, um, but I would I would uh, suggest not just being dismissive. Of these kinds of things, because uh, when you are dismissive, you don't really know what you are, the, the kind of ideas or uh, notions that you are turning your nose up at. You're just saying, bah, that's crazy, that's stupid. Uh, you know, people who believe this are nuts and, and blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, I've, I've never... For me, dismissiveness has always been one of my pet peeves. You know, even even among people who I, I uh, generally tend to agree with on things, when I see them just dismissing something out of hand, uh, I uh, think that that's not wise. And I, I think that that is not, uh, uh, not a symptom of... Uh, being possessed of a wise uh, heart. Um, so, you know, and it's not like Johnny Rotten uh, uh, didn't uh, call some things. Back in 1978, need I remind you, in an interview that he gave to the BBC, I believe it was, Johnny Rotten said, uh, that um, Jimmy Savile <clears throat> was an extremely sleazy man who was involved in all kinds of uh, terrible things, uh, but uh, that we're, we're not allowed to talk about that. And uh, and he said, "I know this it, part of the interview won't get broadcast," and he was right; it was not broadcast. That was back in '78. I mean, gosh, you know. Uh, which shows how long, you know, people uh, in the know had been buzzing uh, about this this strange, strange character, Jimmy Savile, uh, you know, who was just supposed to be this this harmless uh, uh, eccentric, uh, you know, who was just into being charitable and. And uh, you know, was was really just a, was really a great guy, but but uh, back in '78, Rotten himself, John Lydon himself, called it uh, on Jimmy Savile, and the same man, uh, at around the same time, I, I guess a little earlier, whenever he wrote "God Save the Queen," I guess that was '77, maybe '76. Uh, chose to include that line, "God Save the Queen," she ain't no human being. I mean, <laughs> there's there's so many things you could say in a diss track, so to speak. A, you know what's today called a diss track, where you're putting somebody down. Um, but uh, to to choose to go that route uh, uh, and say she's not human, um, I mean that's again. A pretty uh, interesting tack, rhetorically speaking.
Um, especially, again, he was in the know about Jimmy Savile. Uh, this, this guy knew stuff. Uh, this guy was perceptive. You know, he was, he was definitely a prickly son of a bitch. Uh, no question about it. But, uh, but he called it on Jimmy Savile. So maybe he called it on uh, Elizabeth too. Uh, who knows? Well, rest in peace, Queen Lizard. And uh, <laughs> now we got Charles the Lizard King coming up. We'll see what happens with that. Thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts below if you care to leave them.